At this time, I'll call the May 27th, 2021 meeting to order for the Dixon County Commission. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the next item we have is the approval of the agenda. I do not believe there are are any items to add to the agenda? And so knowing that, I would move that we approve the agenda as printed. I'll second that. We have the motion and the second for approval of the agenda. Any other discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the May 20th meeting. It also includes payroll of $422,272.32 and abatements of $1,536. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have the motion and the second for approval of the consent agenda. Any other question or comment? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll go to commission comments. Uh, Ron? Uh, no comments today. Okay. Craig? Uh, just, uh, I had a couple calls and a couple of texts about the uh, Brookville not being on the uh, being able to sell do not being being able to reach an agreement with the Munsons and stuff. And I think we're going to address that with that, what caused that to happen. Okay. Well, and if, um, yes, we can, we can do that. If there, I know there was something in the newspaper about it and I, I guess procedurally there's a process. Um, I, Doug, do you want to make any comment on that at this time? Just as far as clarity is concerned, I, well, um, we haven't had anything come up with the past due real estate taxes on the Brookville property. Now, by that same token, they may be in arrears for uh, real estate taxes. But as county councilor, what I deal with is when the property is three years delinquent, because that's what I have to, three years delinquent, thereafter we move forward with foreclosures on uh, any and all pieces of property that fall into that category. Well, if you recall the last year when we were doing this, we haven't had a tax sale now for a while because of the virus. And so we were geared up to do the tax sale. Uh, the uh, Brookville property wasn't on that. So they weren't in that time frame that we're talking about. Doesn't mean they weren't three years behind. We operate at four years. So when you're three years behind, we start the process of moving forward with the foreclosure. And so we would sell off a parcel or all of the parcels of property and uh, that are delinquent for that time frame. And then the next year we would do the same, those that are three years behind. Uh, so the one we would have been doing was 2015, but that one's been delayed twice now. And now we're gearing back up again to go to the, uh, the third time for that same sale. And that will be uh, hopefully in October, November of this year. So when the governor, when initially why because of the virus, couldn't remove people from homes. And then, uh, at, uh, so we had to withdraw it. And then the second time, uh, the federal government uh, had extended time for any governmental entity uh, that would have been some of the homes are SBA loans or, or other uh, government loans. And so we're not able to move forward with that. Now that's being lifted. So all of that paperwork that we did before, twice, now we're redoing that. It goes back to the two title companies. We divide that between the two title companies to give reports. When those reports come back, then I will prepare all of those pleadings, file those with the court, with the district court, and, uh, and uh, all of those people who are named as defendants, which are not only the people, but anybody with liens on the property, such as banks and so forth, and they will get notification that we're going to foreclose on it. And uh, those individuals or those companies that are interested in the property, they have until 4 o'clock p.m. the day before the tax sale to pay it. And if they don't, then it's too late. The next day we sell it and the bank liens and so forth are extinguished. And so if the bank's going to take an action or somebody else going to take an action, 
they would proceed with a foreclosure uh, and this, to take the property back pursuant to their contract with the uh, with the uh, borrower. And so that's the way that part would take place. We're not involved in any of that. So if this Brookville property, if this comes up after we do this tax sale, if it comes up in the next one, it'll be just like John Doe's property. And uh, the notice will be provided. Uh, that person will have an opportunity to file an answer to the pleadings to come into court and show why there, there's a mistake, why their taxes are not passed due. And uh, assuming that they're not able to do that, it will be a judgment granted in favor of the county and we will move forward with the uh, foreclosures. Um, so that's the way that the process works. The process has been delayed two times. Now we're into the cycle that we would have been a full year later. Uh, we would have done the 15 tax sale already and the 16 tax sale and we would be on the 17, but uh, that's where we are. And procedure, procedurally, there is a process and um, I don't think there's any attempt just to try to single out one person or entity or business or whatever, but it, it has become more of a discussion because the Abilene Reflector Chronicle did have a front page article on it. And I think one of the news stations has had comments on it and parties involved have both made some statements and so on. So, you know, we're not trying to um, sort through all of that, but but procedurally, the, Doug, I appreciate your comments because the, the county and the state and everyone involved has a process they go through and it's set by statute so yes. and we're following our statutes and, and the intent is we like to see all properties um you know stepping up and paying their fair share and and if it's um you know so it's just part of the process can i just summarize though if we had a property that was only worth ten dollars it would have the same procedure would have been followed. So just because you know, this was a high profile that brought us to the attention. Same same yeah. procedure yeah. all the way yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if you've been to the tax sales before, yeah. we have some property that is uh, contested, meaning that there's a neighbor on one side wants it, and it may even come in higher than the taxes that are due. And we turn around and have to refund, or we don't have to, but we do because we're required to, to refund the excess, excess that goes back uh, in a setting such as that. We also have properties come in, there's a, sixty thousand dollar house and it gets sold for ten dollars at the tax sale and that's that's it's, it's a public sale and you might also the people can't buy back and sell no, they cannot buy their property back they can't be uh hundred dollars behind in taxes and come in and say okay i buy it back for ten dollars and eliminate they can't and their immediate family cannot come in and purchase it okay thank you and, and I do not have anything to report in particular, and so we're going to go ahead and move on uh, to public comments because we do not have any petitions today or proclamations. And so if there's anything that does not happen to be on the agenda um, at this time, we'll go ahead and have a, a comment. And I know Don Hammett has joined us online, and so Don, um, we're glad to hear from you and welcome to our meeting. Good morning, thank you for allowing me to speak to you this morning, I appreciate it greatly. Um, everything moved really quickly last week, I wasn't able to give you a heads up, but we did get approval to reopen the museum um, exhibits. Uh, it's limited capacity, limited days of the week, uh, Wednesday through Saturday right now, 10 to two. Um, and we do have timed tickets that are required. This is helping us with some crowd management, and of course with touchless payment. Um, we are working towards expanding the days and expanding the hours. I have already requested the addition of the place of meditation to reopen the place of meditation to the public and I'm waiting to hear back from Washington DC on that plan. Um, so we're, we're in a place where we're expecting a lot of information from Washington to come down to us quickly um, and we're expecting a lot of quick changes in the next several weeks. And I just wanted to let you know um, that, that, that that's in the works. Well, thank you very much and appreciate all that you've done. And um, I guess we are starting to have a few people come into town that specifically want to see the library and the museum. Now, 
the library as far as researchers are they able to access that yet or no the researchers are not allowed in the library as of yet that's another um, change that we're expecting very soon we're expecting to get some guidance from washington dc about how to um, safely have researchers in our spaces um, so i'm expecting research room information very quickly i'm expecting an expansion of the times and um, days very very soon I'm really, I'm, I'm actually very optimistic that we're going to have a lot of changes in the next several weeks. Okay. Um, just one thing for clarification. Uh, um, you know, a lot of times we hear things from Meredith Slector, and so kind of what's the difference between what she does and what you do, and maybe the importance of the friends of the foundation or Eisenhower. If you can That's just summarize that just for public information. That is a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, so the Eisenhower Presidential Library is a federal agency, a federal entity under the National Archives and Records Administration Agency. Um, I am a federal employee. Meredith is part of the Eisenhower Foundation, which is a private 501c3 organization. Um, the Eisenhower Foundation has several missions, one of which is to support the Eisenhower Presidential Library with um, public programming and exhibits. Uh, so we, we have a tandem uh, mission, uh, but we don't exactly do the same thing. Okay, thank you. Any question or comment from the commission? Thank you. We'll maybe hear from you again in uh, a month or so, and um, maybe you'll have uh, some additional good news and appreciate what you're doing and glad that it's open on a um, limited basis. Thank you. We're very, we're very ready to welcome our guests. I appreciate your patience and your kindness. Is there anyone else online that has... Um, joined us that would want to make a comment on anything that is not on the agenda. I know some are interested in the 30 by 30 plan, which will come up a little bit later, um, and also the NHA, which will come up later. But is there any other um, individuals that would want to make comment that have joined us online? And I know we do have the uh, Reflector Chronicle uh, is observing us online, which is uh, glad to have you. Um, we did have a quick question from Megan Armstrong. It comes up, Lori, Megan Armstrong, and I'm never sure whether to say both or if you go by one over the other. But, uh, <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Lynn. I, I, so my name is Lori Megan Armstrong, and I, I, most people know me as Megan, but I've had to clarify what my full name is for other sakes of other things. So I apologize for the confusion, and hopefully over time we'll get it sorted out. Um, but like Lynn said, my name is Lori Megan Armstrong. I live at 1173 Old 40, Abilene, Kansas. I was hoping to find out um, from Dawn, since we got her on the line, I appreciate you getting her here today. Um, how can the community assist in expanding the hours? Um, I've spoken with Senator Moran and he has written and he has talked and he has really pushed to have the Eisenhower Center open. Is there anything that we can do as a community to assist you in, in getting that open and getting Congress to really make a move um, because our the backbone of our economy downtown really revolves around the Eisenhower Center. So I would like to assist if in any way, if the community can, um, would like to do that. If you have any information to share that way, please. Megan, that is incredibly kind and I'm very, very grateful. We um, actually have had um, uh, correspondence with the Senator. Um, our team in Washington is working with his team in Washington as well um, as we move forward. Um, I would very much like to put your thought um, um, on the table when I talk to Meredith Slichter and see if there is something creative that we can come up with. That is very sweet, and I'm very thankful for that. Thank you, ma'am. And I know Julie Roller Weeks has kind of reached out and and also um, you know gets information out, and um, so. Uh, but but yes, I, I think probably if we just reach out to the senator and um, but, but there is kind of limit what we can do. But but we well, certainly we've, keep their attention. We've been in we've been in contact with the senator's office, both senators' office, as a matter of fact. So um, he's he's aware of the situation and he is working uh, for Abilene. I promise. 
Very good, thank you. Are there any other comments? Um, there do not appear to be any further as far as public comment, so we will go ahead and move on from public comment uh, to our reports of county officers. Uh, typically, Brad Hammond gives the report for um, the administrative part, and he is absent today, and so Janelle is here to, to take charge of that. Thank you. So just uh, briefly, the county has received their first share of the American Rescue Recovery Act monies. That's 1.793 million. The next share should be arriving a year from now, which has been, uh, it's nice that we have that and we'll start working on the processes as, as we're uh, going to allocate that monies. The uh, Board of Commissioners have been re, um, Reservations have been made for the Overland Park meeting for the KAC annual conference that's in October. We've got, I handed out a brief overview of updated rules for our meeting and it is on the county website. So due to the current renovation of the courthouse, the commission is holding its weekly meetings here at the health department at 1001 North Brady. There's limited space here for the public to attend, but it will be open for public attendance we ask that if you do plan on attending, that you notify Barb Jones, our county clerk, to make sure that there is room available. But we are encouraging encouraging you to meet virtually and utilizing the, the uh, GoToMeeting and that's listed on the website. So you can either access it by computer or smartphone, either way. Martin, I spoke with him briefly this morning and an update on the uh, paving project. He started on Hawk Road on Monday. They are averaging about 6,000 feet a day, and he hopes to have the four miles of Hawk Road completed by the end of next week. That's Highway 18 to 3400 Avenue. We were awarded 50% funding for the 1145 First Road Bridge replacement. This is a partnership. It's a cost share program with the state of Kansas. It's a component of the Eisenhower Legacy Transportation Program, or IKE. The estimated bridge replacement is 1.2 million, so the county's share is 624,000. And with that, we are in partnership with Clay County. And actually, our share will be about 450,000, and Clay's, Clay County's will be about 175. So it's a it's a good program for us. You might mention the age of the bridge. You know. The age of the bridge is well over 50 years. I don't know if I have that on the list exactly how old it is, but it's uh, actually 83 years old. Yeah. 83 years old. So he's got Schwab Eaton uh, working on survey plans to get the bridge at 1510 Rain Road out to bid as soon as possible. That's the next um, bridge that we've prioritized. And then he's got a rough estimate or a, rough, a list of bridges throughout the county. There's 10 of them that we've identified that uh, need either replacement or a deck re uh, replacement on that. And he is uh, working on a survey stage at the 510-800 Avenue, which is an off-system bridge. It's a partnership, would be an 80-20 match. The other thing that had happened earlier this year in the spring is we had a lightning strike on some radio equipment, and we filed an insurance claim with KCAMP, our insurance provider. It uh, damaged the link antenna, and this affected some areas in the southern part of the county. Woodbine and Abarth and Harrington is now up and running, but we expect to receive payment from K camp and the amount of $5,597, and that is less our, our deductible. So, and that should be it. Uh, you might mention too the, well, I guess I will since I read that. Is the 10 bridges is about 7.2 million at this time for those costs. Yes. So, if uh, the commission in the future might have some more decisions to make whether to place those structures or not, depending on where they're at, because we don't have that kind of we money. We do not. No, and these are all bridges that are in the uh, the youngest bridge, so to speak, is 65 years of age up to 83. So there's they they've lived their useful life, I guess, but it's it's time to uh, to work on the replacement program with them. So okay, thank you. Uh, before we go to Doug, I will mention that earlier today we did have continued our budget hearings and um, had the Historical Society in, and also the Central Kansas Mental Health uh, that came in to give us their um, 
proposals. Right. Doug, do you have anything for us? Well, I just want to mention before, but uh, we're also uh, working on um, the tax sale that we want to try and do for uh, my best guess will be October or November, which would be for the 15, 2015 tax sale. Two years worth have been delayed by the reason of the virus. And so that's our plan is to uh, do one tax sale this year, uh, late fall, and another one by either late spring or early summer. And um, that would be the 16. And then we'll just keep moving until we get caught back up within the three years and we allow one more. So within the four year period of time for past due taxes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Barb, do you have a copy of the resolutions that we're looking at? And, we, and I don't know if you've filled out the resolution numbers on those yet. And I, I marked um, June okay. May, so in the motion. You okay. Might make a note that the date, the month needs to be changed. Thank you. Before we get to that portion, uh, as far as notices and communications, we did receive um, a, a solicitation or opportunity to do work with a LED lighting company out of Oklahoma and wanted us to be aware of some of the savings that can take place. And uh, of course, that reminded me that out here on Interstate, we're finally having some work done to improve the lighting there. And, you know, at the time, probably three years or so ago, uh, well, there'd been numerous attempts to reach out to KDOT and they had funding issues and uh, and they have their priorities and so on, but from the safety standpoint, but also where people would recognize uh, the, the interchange and not drive past it, because um, they expect it to be a little bit more well lit when it's an intersection of two highways. Um, uh, we, we had visited with KDOT and I know Brad had reached out and they happened to KDOT people were at a regional meeting that we had here. And so we were able to talk to some of them in the group that were outside of our specific area. And, and at the same time, the Abilene Reflector Chronicle that very same day had an article about it saying we need something done out there. And uh, we were able to show that to them, which really kind of got their attention. And so a lot of people have been working on it over the years. Um, and they kind of said, well, we're going to move you up. It's probably five years out or four, and you know, maybe we'll do it in two or three years. But anyway, finally, it's been a couple of years now. and. Um, they're doing some work on it. So Janelle, you probably know more about it than I do. So I, you you uh, answered just as, there. So you did you did excellent. <laughs> oh, but 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 you know really it was it was a, a an effort of a lot of individuals, um, you know from the state legislator legislature to the um, you know local people here. And I know Brad had reached out to him, and then we had reached out to him, and had a lot of direct communication with KDOT and. Um, so we maybe got it moved up a little bit on their schedule, but but it is being done. And, and good news. Safety and and having things lit up uh, really help. Okay, we do not have any other items on communications other than we have received quite a bit of information and emails in regards to the resolutions that are on the agenda. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead. And, um, and and get to that part. So the first resolution is to consider is one objecting to President Joe Biden's 30 by 30 plan. It was an executive order, and we have a resolution in regards to that. And and the one thing that I might mention, we had on the resolution and probably was on the website this way that it was passed on the 27th day of June. And so we're going to correct that uh, because this is a May meeting. Um, but but having said that, Janelle, would you want to give a little bit of a summary of that? I like that. And we do have some people here that are wanting to speak to that issue too. So the resolution is opposing the federal government's 30 by 30 land preservation goal. In January, President Biden had issued an executive order stating that he wanted to develop a program to conserve at least 30 percent of the lands and waters in the United States by 2030, which is called the 2030 Project. And that's 
some 680 million acres in our nation's land that will be set aside to preserve in its natural state, preventing productive use of these lands and the resources. And the commission is, we're asking that, or the commission is being asked to sign this because we feel like that there is significant harm to the economy, economy of Dickinson County and it could injure the county's businesses and citizens. And there's nothing in the constitutional, in the constitution or any statutory authority you know, for the president, the Department of Interior, or the Department of Ag, or any other federal agency to set aside and permanently preserve that 30% of the land. So we're asking that um, as a commission that this be adopted. And I know some of the people I've heard from have mentioned that, uh, they, rightly so, that a lot of people that they have the farms and and uh, pasture land and and for various uses, and they're really already preservationists and conservationists uh, just by the way they take care of the land and they've done that for generations as far as farming here in Dixon County and um, we, we don't need to have something formalized from Washington DC to, to reach that objective. Is, is there anyone any question or comment that anyone from the Commission would want to make and before we consider a resolution or a motion on it, um, there may be some public comment we'd want to hear. We don't have any. And, and we can comment beyond that, but uh, is there anyone online or here that would want to make any comment? If so, um, just give your name and address and um, kind of hit the high point, because I know we could have a hour long discussion, but we do have a limit on time typically five minutes or less. I didn't come here to speak on the 3030, but I'm appreciative of you to uh, have this resolution in front of you. The 3030 plan uh, that is proposed is evasive to agriculture. Uh, and I should have stated them. My name's Kevin Harris at 1207 Highway 15. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Uh, uh, and so by this situation, and I think uh, producers also need to be aware of, and I mentioned it earlier, of all avenues that they might use to obtain this, which could include new types of CRP type uh, programs and those types of things. So I think it's good that we're, we're standing that uh, this is not something that uh, we want uh, to see happen. And I think we have to be keenly aware of uh, how they might be going about doing this. So this resolution will at least help if we're standing there with our senators or congressmen at that who have also said, hey, now we don't want this. So appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on this particular one before we would proceed to the next resolution? Before we go to the next resolution, we need to consider a motion to formalize that. You want me to read the yeah. the entire mm -hmm. portion of it? Sure. It's uh, well, I tell you, page I you to summarize it. Okay. Just highlight how that. And, and and I will. I, and people out there aren't going to have a resolution. Okay. No, no. And and actually, that is good to. Uh, and, and some of this repeats a little bit what Janelle had said, but this was a resolution that, as Dixon County we would oppose the federal government's 30 by 30 land preservation goal. And it was whereas on January 27th, 2021, President Joseph Biden Jr. issued an executive order uh, 14008 entitled Tackling the Climate Crisis at Home and Abroad. And, and so what this is um, doing is that the President Biden had directed the Secretary of the Interior in consultation with the Secretary of Agriculture and other senior officials to develop a program to conserve at least 30% of the lands and waterways in the United States by 2030. And they called it the 3030 program. Um, it's a 3030 program which involves 680 million acres of our nation's lands that would be set aside and permanently preserved in its natural state preventing the productive use of these lands and their resources. And 
so so I think uh, you, a little bit what that involves. You know, I always think, for example, the you know Rocky Mountains, and I'm and you're glad in a way that there was some preservation there. Um, but you know, there's a limit on what do you want for parks, what do you want for preservation, what do you want for governmental control, and um, and so it, it's a little bit of a challenge as far as property rights have to be concerned. And so, so I think in summary, that's um, what this addresses. That even though it kind of sounds good, preservation, it's it's also um, the property rights and individual rights are impacted, and um, and probably in a way that we would not want them impacted. So I'm kind of editorializing here a little bit too. So are there questions or additional information in regards? Len, what's the resolution? What's the resolution number on that? The resolution number is 052721. I'd like to make a motion to adopt 052721. Second. Okay, we have the motion and the second to adopt resolution 052721 and Basically, that is a resolution to oppose the federal government's 30 by 30 land preservation. Any other discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And this is one that will take all three of our signatures. And I mentioned earlier um, is that we are putting the date as May. Uh, 27th on this, um, and we'll get that typo correct. The next resolution we have to consider, this is a resolution to oppose the inclusion of the National Heritage Area designated region. There was a meeting in Dickinson County out at the hitching post of Abilene, and I know lots of people attended that meeting, and the information and background was given at that meeting. Um, and and you could tell there were many in attendance, um, you know, from our, our county, and there were a few that were surrounding counties. Because they had meetings like that, they had one in Clay County, they had one in Lincoln County at Vesper, and and so sometimes people from other counties were unable to attend the their particular meeting. Um, but but you could tell that it was a um, strong consensus, if if not unanimous, um, that 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 our citizens and uh, farmers and ranchers, property owners, were not comfortable with the National Heritage Area. Um, and we do have that resolution to oppose the inclusion of Dixon County within the National Heritage Area, which is designated. Um, it was part of a Kansas-Nebraska Heritage Area Partnership, and it encompassed 49 counties, 26 in Kansas. We were part of the southern border, so I believe it was Riley County, Geary County, Dixon, Sling County, Ellsworth, Russell, uh, Ellis and, and Trigo, and maybe I left one out, but then everything to the north on up to the Nebraska border um, were included in that. So I know there are some that uh, were with us in our work study session, and if there were any comments um, or summary statements anyone would want to make, this would be opportunity to do so online, or we have three people in person here also. So we'd want your name and address and um, kind of the same format that we've done all along. Okay. And the, yeah. So there's, seen anybody I don't that have any know. comment online, but of the three of you that are here, is there someone representing the group or someone that would want to make a comment? Or, or a couple of you could, for that matter, too. I, again, Kevin Harris, 1207 Highway 15. Uh, Abilene. 
Uh, I'm just here today to uh, deliver uh, basically a petition process to opt out of the Kansas Nebraska Heritage um, Ryan signatures of 260 that uh, are opposed to this. Uh, they're just at this point a lot of leeriness of anything of designating land into any kind of a program and it was very well heard throughout this last three to four days from everybody who was collecting this and so just just wanted to share that but uh, that's what was delivered on this part turn it over to the more experts if they want to so well, i gave you an excellent um well i think it was like, and this is angel no, King. Sorry, i'm sorry angel cushing from lyon county kansas i was here during a work session and i left out a great deal of homework um, I appreciate you all having us here today um, and talking to us. I don't know that I could add anything more to, to what I said this morning at the uh, board session, other than to reiterate that, that I am personally not against National Heritage Areas. I am against having a National Heritage Area over farmland. Okay, thank you. And I know, um, kind of from our conversation between our work study session and um, a, a couple of you had mentioned, I visited with you that um, you encouraged people to reach out to us, which they did. Uh, they saw us, we had emails, we had some text messages, um, but, but also you had encouraged them in a respectful way. And I'm kind of old fashioned, I'm kind of, um, you know, sometimes we can have disagreements and, and disagree, but I think it's just important to factually state your opinion and and you know have it be a, a discussion and um but i appreciated the comments and and pretty much agreed with uh in principle with what the comments were are there any comments from the commission or questions the resolution on this is 05271a um, and and I think some of the summary of it is that it uh, the designation invites interference in local affairs by special interest groups uh, who claim to be stakeholders. And one of the concerns is some of the people that would be making some of the decisions or have some control or people that really are not familiar with our area. And um, it goes back to personal property rights and um, letting people in our county um, just maintain some of the control they have and not have it taken away. I'll make a motion to accept 052721A. Okay, is there a second on that? I'll second. Okay, we have the motion and we have the second to adopt resolution 052721A. This is a resolution opposing the inclusion of Dixon County within the National Heritage Area designated region. Any other question or comment from the commission? Otherwise, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries and it's uh, unanimous. And so appreciate all the hard work that all of you have done and um, reaching out and kind of organizing some of the efforts within the county and within the region. So you can add another county to the list. Okay. You're allowed to clap, we're allowed. <laughs> can we yell? Yeah. <laughs> um, Number 23. Okay. Michael Jordan. So there you go. <laughs> I don't know how that relates here, but yeah, we need to sign that link. yes, yes, we do need signatures. That, that will make it actually official. And you're welcome to stay, other than it's going to be very brief. So you only have to hang with us another three or four minutes. Um, I do not believe we have anything else no. to discuss or to act on. We do not have any unfinished business or other business, and we have all the signatures in place. And um, 
And so we've got everything officially done, Barb. <coughs> she keeps us in line. So. I move we adjourn. I'll second that. We have the motion and the second to adjourn. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. Linda.